This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We continue to weave our way into the trial of Lucy Letby. We are up to day number three, where chilling details continue to emerge. Well, multiple attempts to kill premature babies. What a sentence to speak about anyone committing. I think that's why she was able to get away with this for so long, allegedly, because who would do something like this? Let's uh, go to our reporter for day three of coverage in the trial of Lucy Letby. In the stillness of the courtroom, the chilling story of a nurse with an unthinkable secret unfolded. Lucy Letby, a seemingly caring and devoted neonatal nurse, stood accused of committing heinous crimes against the most vulnerable of victims, the tiny, fragile lies in her care. The prosecution painted a picture of a cold-blooded and calculated murderer who, they alleged, killed seven premature babies and attempted to murder ten more. Yet, in a macabre twist, she would send a sympathy card to the grieving parents, as if to mask her true intentions. As the evidence mounted, it became clear that this case would reveal a dark and sinister tale, leaving the public to grapple with the unimaginable. The prosecution's chilling opening statement set the stage. It was persistent, it was calculated, and it was cold-blooded. The heart-wrenching story of baby, I encapsulated the horrors that befell these innocent infants. Born at just 970 grams, baby I had overcome her fragile beginnings and was, by all accounts, thriving. However, her fate would take a tragic turn when Lucy Letby, as the prosecution alleged, attempted to murder her on four separate occasions. Despite Baby Eye's resilience, Letby ultimately succeeded in ending her short life. In the days following Baby Eye's death, Letby was seen smiling, even going so far as to reminisce with the grieving mother about the baby's first bath. She seemed to show no remorse for her actions, the prosecution alleged. During the trial, the jury heard how Letby had sent a sympathy card to Baby Eye's parents, claiming it was not normal, but that it was the only time she had ever done it. She also admitted to keeping an image of the card on her phone. Despite these seemingly compassionate gestures, the prosecution argued that her true intentions were sinister. As the trial unfolded, the prosecution delved into Letby's actions during her shifts at the neonatal unit. They alleged that she had attacked baby I on four separate occasions, each time leaving the infant in dire need of medical intervention. Despite her colleague's best efforts to save baby I, her condition would continue to deteriorate until she ultimately passed away. The prosecution also pointed to Letby's online activity, revealing interesting Facebook searches she made following the incidents. A week after baby H's second collapse, Letby searched for child A's mother, the father of twin children E and F, and the mother of baby I, all while she was on her day off. The prosecution argued that this behavior was both suspicious and incriminating. As the story of baby I drew to a close, the prosecution turned their attention to the other victims of Letby's alleged crimes. They detailed the tragic stories of child J, child L, child M, child E, child F, child O, and child P. Each case followed a similar pattern. Infants who were thriving suddenly experienced unexplained collapses, breathing problems, and critical desaturations. In the case of twin boys Child L and Child M, the prosecution alleged that Letby attempted to murder one by poisoning him with insulin while injecting air into the bloodstream of the other. They further pointed to the fact that Letby was only supposed to be working day shifts, due to concerns about the correlation between her presence and unexpected deaths and life-threatening episodes during night shifts. When Letby's home was searched two years after the incidents, investigators found medical notes detailing the doses of adrenaline given to child M during his collapse. Letby claimed that she had taken the notes home by accident and denied that they were souvenirs of her horrific crimes. She also denied any intentional harm to child M. 
The prosecution then turned to the tragic case of two male triplets, Child O and Child P, who were also allegedly targeted by Letby. The triplets were born prematurely but, like the other infants in Letby's care, had been steadily improving. However, both infants experienced sudden and unexplained collapses, leading to the eventual death of Child O. The prosecution claimed that Letby had injected insulin into Child O's bloodstream, causing a fatal drop in his blood sugar levels, and attempted the same with Child P. Throughout the trial, Letby maintained her innocence, claiming that she had never deliberately harmed any of the infants in her care. Her defense team attempted to poke holes in the prosecution's case, arguing that the incidents could have been the result of contamination, equipment failure, or genuine medical emergencies. They pointed to the fact that there was no direct evidence linking Letby to the crimes, and that many of the alleged victims had suffered from a range of pre-existing medical conditions. The defense also highlighted the emotional toll that working in the neonatal unit had taken on Letby. They presented character witnesses who spoke of her dedication and commitment to the babies in her care, as well as her distress and guilt over the deaths and near deaths that occurred during her shifts. However, the prosecution countered these claims by pointing to the suspicious pattern of incidents that occurred while Letby was on duty, as well as her chilling Facebook searches and seemingly callous behavior. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Brisky. Day three of the trial of Lucy Letby as we work backwards to forwards so you can hear all of the details in this chilling trial that is still going on today. I'm going to continue to cover that for you right here. Press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking updates or discussions on these cases. My name's Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.